righteous God, a God is a caring God. See how he rings, see how he cares. A God is a righteous God. A God is a loving God. A God is a caring God. See how he reigns, see how he cares. A God is a righteous God. Praise the Lord. This is our Bishop Grace Karaoke Oman Grace of Amazing Grace International Ministries and Abundant Glory International Ministries and also the mother to the amazing champions at Amazing Grace Children's Home. And today, I want to welcome you to the Chat Ministers Children Networking Platform that is all always uh, we always meet on Saturdays at 11:45 a.m. in US Eastern Time Zone and uh, you can also see what other times we meet on the screen and you can also log into our website at www.agracem.org and you'll be able to see all the other things that we do. I want to start by thanking our partners that have watched these videos online and have partnered with this ministry and especially in supporting the work of the amazing champions and also taking care of the orphans that we educate in high school. May the Lord bless you as you continue to become partakers of the great blessings that God has given us. I also want to thank God for all the CMCs that have stood with me this month. Today being our last day of uh, the 28 days of prayer and fasting, we have and we've had a powerful, powerful session with the, with, with the CMCs. Some started with us from the beginning and they have been with us pursuing righteousness for the nations of the world. Let me tell you, we have already, we are touching all the billions that are here on earth. We thank God for giving us such an honor, such a great, I mean, it's a privilege to be allowed to do this, to stand in the gap on behalf of the nations and even presenting them on the altar of righteousness. And I invite you and ask you, please uh, invite all your friends, all your relatives, all the church ministers, children, and even the ministers, your pastors, your bishops, the apostles, everyone that you know, please invite them so that they can hear what God is doing in the lives of the CMCs. Because today we have them. We have invited them. They are powerful. God is going to use them today in a great way as they minister alongside with Mom Grace and even Dad Richard, who is a nif is not right here uh, on the screen, but he is doing something great, making sure that this program is running and running smoothly. And even my number one prayer partner, God bless you. At this time, I would want us to pray and also hear the word of God. Heavenly Father, I thank you for giving us this platform where we can fellowship and even share your word. I want to give you praise for everyone that is logging in and thanking you for all the church ministers, children all over the world. Bless them and take care of them and take them to another level as we minister together in Jesus' name. Amen. Continue to invite each and every person and even subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is uh, Bishop Dr. Grace Karyuki. And also, our you, uh, our, um, you can also like, uh, uh, like our pages and even like our Facebook pages and God is going to bless you. And this time, I would want us to, to proclaim righteousness. That is what we've been doing, proclaiming righteousness to the nations. And right now, want us to read uh, or even share the word of God in Romans chapter 4, verses 13. And I'm reading from the Passion Translation. The Bible says, God promised Abraham and his descendants that they would have an heir who would reign over the world. That was God's promise. This royal promise was not fulfilled because Abraham kept all the law, but through the righteousness that was transferred by faith. You know what? The promises they were, not pro were not fulfilled because of Abraham being righteous. No, it was fulfilled because of um, the, through the righteousness that was transferred by faith. That righteousness was transferred by faith. Be be Abraham believed God. For if he kept that verse 14, for if 
keeping the law earns the inheritance, then faith is robbed of its power and the promise becomes useless. So it is only by faith, it's not by law. It is because of faith that we are able to earn the inheritance of the promises that God has given us. And one of the great inheritance that God has given us, the one that is above all the promises that God has given you, he has promised to give us the nations as an inheritance when we ask. And that is why we've met, we have been meeting for the 28 days asking God for our inheritance, which he has promised and told us that you know what, and even by faith, coming to him, believing and trusting him for the nations that the over, over 7 billion souls have now come and been presented on the righteous altar before God and believing that righteousness and revival is going to reign in these nations because you've called them and even proclaimed them into the kingdom of God and even proclaimed the righteousness in this king, in these nations. And therefore, Abraham, he became righteous and became uh, uh, the heir of the promise and even the heir of the promise of the royal promise that God promised him because he believed the God that gave the promise. May you believe this God that has promised is giving us an inheritance of the nation and even the ends of the earth as we has, he has given them to us uh, to possess. So today become one with us as we will be possessing all these inheritance. And so right now I would want to invite our first speaker. Our first speaker is this is is uh, someone that uh, that that is very very special to us and uh, the one of the CMCs together with his his wife. And this is uh, from Amazing Grace International Ministries, Kenya. And this is uh, uh, Lark Ireri, uh, together with his wife, Latifa Ireri. We welcome you to minister to us. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Thanks for having us. Uh, we are the Ireris. My name is Latifa. And I'm Lark Ireri Moshiri. So today, guys, you're speaking about how the ACMC's racial work impacts our family and the nation at large. And we are so much excited to talk about this topic because it's, a, it's an eye-opening topic. It makes us think deeper and, and feel deeper about, about our work in righteousness. And to know that even that our work in righteousness, me as luck and Latifa, it's not just for us. It is for the sake of our family. It's for the sake of the nation. It is for the sake of future generations to come. This is our hope that you'll be able to share our best and to we hope this will be impactful in Jesus' name. Yeah. So for us as um, a family, the first and the most important part that the work of righteousness or working in righteousness has been impactful is in keeping our family together. Because we see it this way, if we do not walk a righteous way or in a righteous path, would not be together as a family and this would affect our children it would affect how they grow up they'd grow up probably not feeling loved or even our home would be broken that such as that you'd no longer be husband and wife but since you walk in righteousness god is between us he keeps our relationship strong he keeps on mending it where there are cracks and that's we're able to work together in marriage and in that way we raise our children in in union and we raise them in, as, as one family so there is no opportunity for for the devil or his agents to come in between our marriage or even to come in between our parenting, us raising our children. So we're able to raise our children in a stable home. Not only a stable home, this work of righteousness, it keeps us in a way that we we have, we are like each other's backup. I have my wife here, so it's she's, she, she looks after me and I look after her. So this family is complete. Look after each other in prayer, in in the way that we feel in our emotions in in every part we're looking after each other so being righteous is or walking in a righteous path is that much important for our family and even as individuals just to add on what like i said um i think uh the benefits of actually working a righteous uh life 
is that especially as spouses is that you're able to involve god in your marriage because without god it becomes so hard to you know to manage uh to manage to manage your relationship or even your marriage and the reason why i'm saying that is because practically this is something that has happened to us and i think or rather i know if we didn't have god in our marriage you know we wouldn't be sitting here today and talking about this uh it's very fundamental to just ensure that you have god in your life so walking that treasures uh, path of uh, of life ensures that you have god you invite god in your life you invite god in your marriage and in that way it helps actually helps you uh, be able to walk um, or rather manage your marriage in a in a in a godly way and in a way that pleases him in a way that you know uh is uh, loving to one another because for instance when 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 you're married or when you're spouse to uh, someone else it's mostly more of you know doing things that god is commanding you to do you know so for instance like for a man it's it, you know in the bible it says that you need to love your wife you know and uh for a woman it's more of you need to submit to a husband so once you have those things you know in, in in place it's easy for you to actually be able to know how to handle your spouse and that you know uh comes down to working that treasures uh life i like what she says especially the part about love uh personally what i've discovered is that we do not have love generators in our hearts we actually rely on the love of god to be able to love the other person and for me personally i found out this year that when you're walking that righteous life god gives you that love that love that you need to share with your children that you need to share with your love it is not a selfish kind of love but love that comes from god and i would say that's the best kind of love because that way I can love her right i can honor her the right way and in that way the marriage stays strong it keeps on growing from level to level the same way with the way i handle my children we we are able to love them with the love of god and in the same way raise them in the love of god so we raise one happy righteous family i would say so yeah Another thing that I you know I've, I've, I've discovered is that when we walk a righteous path uh, it's easy for our children to mimic what we are doing and they are able to actually follow the path that you are directing or rather they are seeing us as parents you know taking so it's important to be you know to ensure that you know your your family is walking the right path and more so your children so for us i would say our children mimic exactly what we do so for instance they will they will um understand easier how to pray if they see we, if they see us praying they will understand you know other godly things if we are able to actually guide them and lead them on how to do them this is one of the other ways that we affect our nation and our family when we walk in a righteous path i've seen for example the biggest example in my family is with my children when we walk in the righteous path for example when we pray to god when we pray to god when we do godly activities our children easily pick up on that and they mimic us they want to do what we are doing and in turn we see it in them they want to pray when they are eating their food when they are going to bed they are welcoming to visit us so on and so forth so walking in a righteous path makes makes it easier for them to also follow that path as the bible says uh teach a child in the good ways and they sh- it shall walk it shall never depart in it and that is one of the benefits of living a righteous life because our children our children copy us we are their role models and that is what they will take into the world if they see us doing bad things they'll take that into the world if they see us good doing good things and righteous things that is what they will take with them into the world so that's one, one of the biggest ways i think we affect our own nuclear family when we walk in righteousness So walking in righteousness as a CMC uh also affects our extended family uh in in very uh different ways. Mm-hmm. For instance, um you know we are you know it becomes easy for us to be able to you know pray for our extended families. We are able to see or even sometimes you know uh de- detect if something is wrong. 
for instance maybe if it's a sibling or if it, maybe it's a, a one of our parents it's easy for us to be able to you know detect if there's a problem and be you know be easy for us to actually go and talk to them about it so there are so many ways to approach things and because of the grace that god grants you know grants people especially when you're walking that treacherous path you know you you actually have that courage to speak to speak up and talk about the things that actually you're seeing that are not going right working in righteousness also has had a very big impact on our extended family for instance when we pray and we we spend time with god he's able to show us the gaps that are in our families and we're able to intercede and pray for our family members we are, we are able to even call out our family members and talk to them if there is anything going wrong in their lives we are able to sit them through and talk to them clearly and in a loving way and they are able to look at things and be able to change where they are not able to change we are able to pray for them and hopefully God changes them mm-hmm. but um, working in righteousness I would say has been so important to us because it's placed us in a point whereby we, we have the eyes to see the things that are going wrong around our families. Obviously, we love our family members and we want to see the best happening in them. So, you know, working in righteousness and able to see the gaps and those wrong things and pray over them and talk to them over those things. And maybe my wife can add something about it. Uh, for me, I think working in righteousness or in righteousness as, um, has brought positive uh, energy into our extended family. And the reason why I say that is because um, we are becoming more close to our families because of, you know, because of the things or because of also us being close to God. And God has, you know, God gives or grant, grants us grace to be able to actually assist and talk and approach our family in a different way in a different perspective or in a different way that we never used to do before so that has brought our family so close to to each other or even to like in general and um i'm um, so it's something that i'm super grateful for and for me i would say it has even made me become close to my own husband become close to my own mom become close to my mom-in-law and such things so those are just a few examples but being working a racial path or a a racial life has made us you know be able to be easy to handle you know to handle our our family our extended families and to handle things because we are not doing things in fear but we are doing them because god has told us that he's going to give us the grace to approach problems or even to approach things that sometimes we may not see them working right and through that you find that it's easy for us to be able to connect with 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 you know with the, our extended families or even in any other person in general just to add on that i also think uh uh working that treasures life um you know it, you become you become more like a role model and um I think I've actually seen some changes in in my own extended family. You know, my brothers, my small cuz I have small brothers, they are becoming, you know, they are, they are, they are starting to understand what prayers are and they are, they are starting to respect, you know, to respect being a prayerful uh, person. So that is um that is a good thing to be a role model in a good way and you know, for you to be able to actually teach your small your small brothers and sisters that you know prayers are important reading the bible is important or even doing the the good acts in life and and such things another example is there's something that my mom told me the other day and i was super shocked about it she said she's been having issues with her leg and i've been telling her you know we've been praying for you and you're going to be well and all that so she came to my to her house and she said you know my leg feels better i've been praying for it seriously for the first time so i was like wow she's actually beginning to appreciate and and embrace prayers so that is a good thing so that made me feel proud of just the small talks that i you know i give her or even the the small advice or tips i give her from the understanding i have another thing that i've also realized uh or rather a benefit of working a righteous life as a cmc is that you get inner peace and um this is so because 
you know there's so much that is happening right now in the world there's so much that is happening you know everywhere you get you go outside there's so much chaos happening but once you accept god or embrace god and start walking that precious life you know there's just that certain peace that you get in you in, in you that you do not you cannot even get it anywhere else you cannot get it from your own husband you cannot get it from your own children or family or friends and stuff like that but you only get it from god so walking a righteous path actually grants you a certain peace that you can't get from anything on this on this earth i'm reminded about a friend of ours who was once in a very sickly position and he was uncomfortable in his house as a neighbor so he came he came to spend some time in our house and he told me that day he told me that despite our kids jumping around and making all the noise he told me i love the peace in your house and that thing stuck in my mind that we have peace in our house no matter even if our kids are jumping and shouting all around he said there was peace in this house and he loves the peace in this house and he prefers the peace in this house even with the noises from the kids so yeah i would say the peace the peace is one way that we would affect our neighbors and the nation around us because people say we are the salt of the earth and if that peace, people see that peace they see that salt and they want that salt yes so uh that's all for today um thank you so much for you know taking the time to to listen to this or even to watch this and we'd like to say a special thank you to bishop uh grace for giving us the opportunity to even talk about this and uh we really wish and pray uh nothing but the best for everyone that who is listening or watching this and uh may god bless you and may god be with you till next time yes thank you all and again let me repeat what my wife has said uh, our prayer for all cmc is that god would help us to walk a life of purity and of righteousness and not only for ourselves but may our lives affect everyone around us everyone near us may they feel and be changed by our walk of righteousness absolutely yes bye bye thank you Lack actually, Lack Mushiri, together with your wife, uh, uh, Latifa Ireri, may the Lord bless you for that powerful, powerful testimony and even the word that you shared with us today. May the Lord bless you and take you to another level. God bless you. Glory to Jesus. I believe you are inviting your friends uh, as uh, you, you continue uh, being a partaker of what God is doing in this ministry. God is taking us to a new level. Please invite your friends. They, again, this is Bishop Dr. Grace Karuki of Amazing Grace International Ministries and Abundant Glory International Ministries, the mother to the CMCs and also the mother to the amazing champions. That is the amazing that, that uh, we take care of at Amazing Grace Children's Home. Uh, in, in Nairobi and also the, the, the children that we educate all over the world that uh, I mean and even all over Kenya we have quite a number of children in high school we are educating and so we continue with this service and as we continue please invite your friends and uh, Psalms 40 verse 9 to 11 the Bible says remember today we are proclaiming righteousness I proclaim your saying acts in the great assembly I do not seal my lips Lord as you know I do not hide your righteousness in my heart I speak of your faithfulness and your saving help I do not conceal your love and your faithfulness from the great assembly. Do not withhold your mercy from me, Lord. May your love and faithfulness always protect me. This is what David proclaimed. He proclaimed the good news of God's kingdom, of God's righteousness. He did not hide it. He did not just keep it, but he proclaimed. You know, it becomes righteousness when you live it and also you live in that life of righteousness and not only live in that life of righteousness, but you also proclaim this kind of life. And God is going to bless you as you continue to proclaim the good news to the nations and tell and even claiming them into the kingdom of God. What a blessing. I would want to invite our next speaker. Our next speaker is 
is a, is a someone that is very very special, and this is a daughter. Her name is uh, Sayanet Mayani, all the way from Kajiado. Welcome, Sayanet, and become a blessing to us. Please invite your friends, as Sayanet is going to be a blessing today. Praise God. My name is Esther Sayanet. I'm born again. I fellowship at uh, Free Pentecostal Fellowship Church in Korika, Kajiado County, Kenya. I thank God for this day and this opportunity to speak to my fellow CMCs and to, uh, to encourage them by the word of God. I thank God for Mom Grace. You have been a blessing to us. The CMCs, you have been praying for us, teaching us the word of God and also encouraging us in a different ways. May the Lord bless you so much. I thank God also for my parents. They have been so supportive and may the Lord bless them for everything that they have been doing unto us. And this evening, I want to speak to us as CMCs on sowing righteousness in our parents' ministries. I will read from the book of Proverbs chapter 11, verses 18, the second part, which says, He who sows righteousness and lives his life with integrity will have a true reward that is both satisfying and permanent. I will begin by saying, as a CMC or every one of us, when you sow righteousness, you will reap righteousness. When you sow goodness, you will reap goodness. Whatever you sow, that is what you will reap. And as a CMC, as you support your parent, even in ministry, that is sowing righteousness in their ministry. That is sowing goodness in their ministry. And at the end of it all, you will have a true reward that is both permanent and satisfying. You will reap goodness. You will reap integrity of which that is what you sowed in your parents' ministry. And so how do we sow in our parents' ministry? We support them. And how do we support them? First of all, by our character being a godly character that reflects of the true gospel of Christ. We must be obedient to our parents. We must honor our parents. We must love them. We, Whenever they call us to do anything, whenever they ask us to do anything, let us just do it wholeheartedly. Remember, they are not only of God. They carry the anointing of God and the grace of God upon their lives is what even should be passed on even unto us. And so when we obey them, when we, when we honor them, we are fulfilling the Ephesians 6 one, which says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord so that you may live long and have a, a prosperous life in the future. So, and then number two, how do we support our parents' ministries? We also support them in prayer. Whenever we pray, let us always remember to pray for our parents. As a CMC, you relate to the kind of struggles that our parents are facing, being pastors and, and sacrificing their time, their wealth and everything else for the sake of the work of Christ. And it has not been easy. We have seen them suffering. We have seen them uh, crying, some of them. They have shared to us some of the issues that they are facing and some of them, some of the other issues we may not know. But I just want to tell you as a CMC, Pray for your parent. Pray for your parent who is not only your biological parent, but also a servant of God. So pray for them that the Lord will give them grace, that the anointing of God will continue to flow in their lives, and they will continue to minister the true gospel of Christ, and the Lord will help you pray accordingly. Then the other thing is encourage them. Speak to them once in a while. Just tell them that I can see in the future this ministry growing and that will at least give them hope. In whatever they are going through, they will have hope because it is also coming from you as their child and I believe they will listen to you. Then also being active in, in our parents' ministries, let us participate fully like God has given us talents he has given us gifts and that is what we should be using in his house just to praise the Lord and by this we are also supporting our parents if you are talented in singing join the praise and worship join the choir if you are talented in our parents but they are also servants in playing the instruments the guitars the pianos join there and exercise your talent by this you also grow and you are also supporting your parent ministry and above all you're also serving God and you are serving the servants of God whom God has chosen and placed them in your life. So be innovative. If you, you love this IT stuff, just get into there, do it, create posters and make sure that you are supporting your parents' ministries. And this is a blessing. And so I started by saying when you sow goodness, you will reap goodness. And so what happens to us 
when we support our parents. We receive blessing and favor. Jesus grew in, in favor and wisdom before God and men. And even us, when we support our parents in ministry, as we continue to grow, we receive blessings, we receive wisdom and favor, not only before God, but even before men and even before our parents. Our parents will always be speaking a blessing unto our lives because they can see that we are supporting the work of God in their lives. They can see that we have committed ourselves in helping them also fulfill the assignment that which God has placed in their lives. In, in their lives and so God will bless us by supporting our parents they are not only our biological parents but they are also servants of God and so when you help a servant of God when you support a servant of God there's an assurity of blessing and that is it is illustrated even in the word of God. When people helped the servants of God, God always blessed them. And when the servants of God spoke a blessing into their lives, it came to pass. Then your parents will also bless you. They will bless whatever you do. They will bless your future because you are also participating in, in their assignment, that which God has given them. And by also... By these blessings, it is the blessings that comes from Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1. When we honor all our ways, will be prosperous. Then also from the church at large, they will also bless you as a CMC when you support your parent. You know, even the church sees whatever our parents are going through, but some of them, they cannot reach to help them. But when we, we devote ourselves, at least even someone out there will be like, that pastor's kid is very active. She's supporting her parents' ministries or he's supporting her parents' ministries fully. And may the Lord just bless her. May the Lord favor her even in her academics or wherever she goes. And by that word, that which that person has spoken, it will have an impact in your life because we all know that the tongue has power in whatever we speak then we also grow by supporting our parents ministries our personal lives are influenced spiritually physically socially we also grow from one level to another like for the skills and talents that which God has given us when we exercise them we grow uh, a skill that is not used it is loosed and so if you don't use the skill that God has given you or the talent, you will lose it. If you are talented in singing and you don't participate in singing and maybe that is the platform that which you can participate actively or maybe if you are at home, you just fellowship there and you are talented in singing and yet you do not sing, you will not be able to grow. So let us exercise our skills, our talents and giftings in supporting our parents' ministries. And we, we also grow, we get connections, we get favor from God and even from men. And then the other thing is spiritual growth. As we support them, we spend time in, in church. Like when you go for Bible studies, when you go for prayers, intercessory, the events that are held in our churches, we spend time in the presence of God. And we are not just there just to stare at the preacher or take photos or just sing. God will speak to us. And by spending time in his presence, the Lord speaks to us and we, we begin to develop an intimate relationship with God. And that affects our spiritual lives. We grow. We grow in faith. We grow in different ways. We get to read the word of God. The hunger and past of the word of God grows in us day by day as we continue to spend time with God. We also get to know him more and more. Then my last point is that there are, I will conclude just by saying there are many benefits of supporting our parents' ministries. There are very many benefits of sowing righteousness, of doing good to our parents' ministries. And you know, despite having all these benefits, I cannot assure you that it will also be, it will always be good. There are times when you will face challenges as a CMC. We have had some of the testimonies of, of the CMCs of the kind of challenges that they are facing but I just want to give you hope that this is the discipline and the training that which you get in your life for the sake of your future or for your destiny and so when you face such such oppositions or or when you, whatever challenge that you face in your parents' ministry, it helps you to grow. It builds your faith. It builds your confidence. You get to know where you're wrong. You get to know where you're right. And you will grow. It serves as a training ground. And in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11 says, No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness, peace for those who have been trained by it. So for whatever you're going through, I just want 
want you to take heart be encouraged continue serving god you're not only doing it for your parents or for the people in church you're also serving god and you're also serving the servants of god so just be encouraged continue supporting your parents ministries and i know all will read first corinthians chapter 15 and verses 58 says stand firm and let nothing move you always give yourselves fully to the work of god because you know that your labor in the lord is not in vain as you serve your parents, that is your labor in the Lord. As you support your parents' ministries, that is sowing righteousness. And I want you to believe me today that it is not in vain. The Lord who sees in secret will reward you openly. And the Lord does not allow us just to do anything by our own strength. Even serving him, we are not doing it by our own strength, but it is by the strength that he gives us through the Holy Spirit who empowers us, who helps us, who guides us, and enables us to do even whatever we thought that we could not do. So purpose to support your parents' ministries, purpose to pray for them, purpose to encourage them. At least you, you wake up early as your dad wakes up early. You just wake up early, you tell your dad, I want to accompany Company you to church, you also encourage them. You pray for them, you carry for them the Bible, you give them water and such things, and they also feel happy. And when they are happy, we also we are also happy. They bless us, and so that is what I will just leave us live with us today with. And may God bless you so much. So I will just like to pray, and then we shall conclude. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this day. Thank you for your word, O oh God. Thank you for each and every uh, church minister's child who was, who's watching me today. I pray for them that, Jehovah God, your grace will be sufficient for us, that we will support our parents' ministries, and we will serve you, Jehovah God, even without murmuring or grumbling in Jesus' name. I pray that, God, you will help us, Jehovah God, to do it even from the bottom of our hearts. Whenever we are undergoing struggles, I pray that, Jehovah God, your grace will be sufficient and you will give us hope to move on in Jesus' mighty name. I pray may you bless us, may you bless our parents, may you bless the work that they do, Jehovah God, and may your grace continue being sufficient for them. Let your anointing flow upon their lives in Jesus' mighty name. I pray for Mom Grace, Jehovah God, and the ministry that she is doing. May you bless her, Jehovah God. May you continue to take her to more levels in Jesus' name. Grant her favor, Jehovah God, and for the plans that she is having for the CMCs, may they come to pass in Jesus' mighty name. We give you glory, Lord, and we give you honor. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray trusting and believing. Amen. Thank you, Sir Annette, for that wonderful, wonderful, wonderful uh, explanation and proclamation of righteousness. May the Lord bless you for doing such a great research on righteousness. Be blessed as you continue even to pursue righteousness and even become a blessing everywhere you go. And then at this time, our next speaker is also someone, is a, is, a, is a man of God that is really great. And this man of God, and his name is uh, um, Pastor Isaac and, uh, his, he, and his wife, Pastor Janice Moya. May the Lord bless you as you become a blessing to us. Oh, hallelujah. What a beautiful, what a beautiful moment. This is Pastor Isaac Moya from Shiloh Cathedral Praise, Kariobangi, Nairobi, Kenya. And this is my wife. Hi, everyone. Praise the Lord. This is Pastor Janice uh, Isaac from Shiloh Cathedral Praise, Kariobangi, Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, I want to take this opportunity to thank everybody that is watching. Uh, Mom, uh, Bishop Grace, Karaoke, thank you so much for this platform that uh, we are exploring, we are learning, we are educating one another. We just want to thank you so much for the idea. May the Lord keep on blessing you and increasing your idea more and more. Thank you so much. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Today we are sharing the word of God and we are talking about when the righteous is challenged. As a as a amen, amen. amen. <laughs> That's good. Now, uh, before we go there, I just want to talk about the righteous. Mm -hmm. What is the meaning of righteousness? Amen. It is a state, it is a state of being morally correct Amen. and justifiable. Amen. Amen. Also, you can say it is an acting, it is acting in accord with divine or moral law. Amen. What is your civil? 
and uh, that is in Kiswahili. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> when you yeah. praise the Lord, Hallelujah. Yeah. Now we will be mixing it. Amen. Yeah. So those who don't understand English, yeah, Kiswahili. Mm. Karibu sana. Welcome. Amen. Righteousness is being right with God. Mm -hmm. Is doing things in the right way that pleases God. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. How do we come? How did we come in this place? Uh, and uh, and, uh, and and what happened that pushed us mm -hmm. to righteousness? Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, God Himself, God Himself, God Himself. The Bible says, uh, he speak, uh, God, the Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 21. Can you read this witness? Mm -hmm. God, God made His own Son, who was not known to sin. Mm -hmm. That it may become seen, that we may become mm -hmm. righteous. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you read there? Uh, 21. Mm. God made him who had no sin mm -hmm. to be seen for us, mm -hmm. so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So we become righteousness of God through who? Through Christ him. Jesus. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Amen. So through Christ Jesus, righteousness now is seen in us so we cannot we cannot independently be righteous mm -hmm. but through christ sure. because now through god himself he mm -hmm. gave his son mm -hmm. hallelujah what else was it here it is it, i'm telling you it is so hard to be righteous mm -hmm. if not by the help of the holy ghost it is by the help of the holy ghost we are able to live a righteous life mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. We were unrighteous before Christ saved us. Mm -hmm. We were unrighteous before Christ came and died for us. Before we were saved, we were unrighteous. Sure. Was mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm so excited for this. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it is through Christ mm -hmm. we became righteous. Mm -hmm. And God gave himself that we may become righteous. Mm -hmm. No matter the challenge that we pass through, listen to me. Through Christ, we are made righteous. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Now, listen to me. I want you to get something here, by the grace of God. That righteousness comes when we believe in Christ. When we confess our sin. Mm -hmm. When we live, the, we, when we stop living the old life that we've been living. Mm -hmm. And start living a new, new life in Christ Jesus. Sure. I want us to read students in the book of uh, John. Mm -hmm. John chapter 1. John, John chapter 1 uh, verse 9. That says, if we confess our sin, he is faithful to forgive. Us. To forgive. Uh -huh. He is faithful. To forgive us mm -hmm. until a man confesses and say lord forgive me lord i am a sinner lord i have sinned against you mm -hmm. forgive me hallelujah we are made right through christ so he died mm -hmm. he died for us sure mm -hmm. hallelujah so until we confess our sins yes yeah it is by and the confession from our wicked ways mm -hmm. from our mm -hmm. sinful way yes that's how we become righteous yes Amen. hallelujah Amen. that's when we become righteous Mm -hmm. The old way, the way you are doing things, mm -hmm. the way you are doing things to please yourself, mm -hmm. the way you are doing things to hurt others. Now you turn from there. Can you read that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The book mm -hmm. of John, First John, one nine, mm. and the Bible says, yes. "If we confess our sins, mm. He is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins mm. and purify us from all unrighteousness." Hallelujah. Amen. Mm -hmm. If if we confess our sin, mm -hmm. he is faithful. So righteousness, and is just, mm -hmm. righteousness starts from confession. Confession. Yeah. Forgiveness mm -hmm. of sin. If we confess yourself, yes. your sins, yes. that's when now the Holy Spirit will enter in you and yes. start to cleanse you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, it is, and it is through Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, when you believe in Christ, in fact, it, both, we, we see, uh, it is through the help of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Through the help of the Holy Ghost. The reason I'm saying that through the help of the Holy Ghost is because it is it is so impossible to be righteous without sure. the help of the Holy Ghost. Sure. For you to find a righteous man is so impossible. Mm -hmm. Men nowadays are wicked. Men are wicked. Challenges will come day and night. Mm -hmm. You need the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. to help you, to teach you, to remind you the word of God. And to become holy. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Because mm -hmm. righteousness is being holy. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Righteousness is being holy. Mm -hmm. Now, I want you to get something here by the grace of God. <laughs> because those who believe in Christ, those who believe in the finished work of the cross, those who believe have been made righteous by the Father. Mm -hmm. Have been made righteous by the Father mm -hmm. through Christ. Yeah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to get, I want to read something in the book of uh, Proverbs, mm -hmm. chapter 16, verse, chapter 6, verse 16. Mm -hmm. And I want you to get this. It says, it talks about the, the, the seven things that God hates. Mm -hmm. Are you there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are six things mm -hmm. uh, the Lord hates. Mm -hmm. Seven are detestable to mm -hmm. Him. Uh -huh. 17. Mm. Haughty eyes, mm -hmm. a lying tongue, mm -hmm. a hand that sheds innocent blood. Th th I want you to get this. These are things that unrighteous do. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. A heart that devises wicked schemes, mm -hmm. a feet that are quick to rush into evil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. A false witness who pours out lies. A false witness. Mm -hmm. You become that wicked. God does all of you. Wicked people. Mm -hmm. you, you, you want to, to give false witness against your neighbor. Mm -hmm. God hates this kind of people. Eh? You you know, this is a proof mm -hmm. that God hates sure. unrighteousness. Sure. Sure. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh -huh. you, are, you are saying something. Yeah, yeah. Me, mine is just uh, that uh, I've realized that mm. most of the people that uh, when you know you are righteous and you are living a holy life, eh? a life full of Christ. Eh? Mm. Maybe there are those people that are living a, a righteous life and they are saying, if I lie just a little bit to protect my business, just a little bit to protect my marriage, mm. it won't make me unrighteous. Mm. But the Bible mm. here is indicating that even lying tongue or lying mouth mm. is unrighteousness. You see, that's what I'm saying, you need, people need the help uh, of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Because you cannot say that I, when, I, when I lie, mm -hmm. I've, not, I've not sinned. Lying is a sin. But the good thing is here. The Bible says, if we confess, he is faithful. He is faithful. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Are you willing to confess? If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to reach to a point of making peace. Mm -hmm. Even somebody who has wronged you, you are, you are able to make peace. In CMC family, sometimes, you know, many people don't expect us to be, to, people, people can wrong us that they, they, they don't expect us to mm -hmm. react. They don't expect us to react. But, but for sure, sometimes we react. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, in most cases. Mm -hmm. But this is, this is what we are talking today. Try your best to be faithful to God. Mm -hmm. Even though you are pushed to the corner, try and be faithful to God. Mm -hmm. Even if things are not the way you want them to be, yeah. be to be better to be wrong in the eyes of men, uh -huh. but be right in the eyes of God. Sure. I want us to read this James chapter 3, James 3 18. Uh -huh. I want us to read there. Uh -huh. James 3 18. Listen, daily, 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 we have challenges. Uh -huh. Challenges in righteousness. Daily. Are you there, Sunis? Uh, 3 James 3.18, mm -hmm. the word of God says, mm -hmm. Peacemakers mm -hmm. who sow in peace mm -hmm. raise a harvest of righteousness. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Peacemakers. Mm -hmm. Peacemakers. Now, I want us to get now this. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. Get that one. That one now. I want you to get something here. By the grace of God, as we are winding it up. Hebrews winding up. Yes. Mm -hmm. 10.23. I want you to get something here. The word of God is saying in Hebrew 10.23. Yes. Let us all fast the profession of our faith mm. without wavering. Mm. Without he, wavering. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. For he is faithful. He is Christ. faithful. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Continue. 24. Mm. And let us consider how we may spur one another mm. on towards love mm. and good deeds. You see, we have... We have to correct each other with love. Mm. Even though you have wronged me, I can correct you with love. Sure. You see? Mm -hmm. Because we, we, we should make sure that we don't win far. Sure. Because challenges will be there. But we need to stand some with what we profess. Sure. Sure. 
challenges will come in our life. People will push us right center, but we need to stand. Mm -hmm. People will bring some deals that are so sweet. Uh, and and, and you, 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 you go to a, a place and you ask yourself, oh, what can I do about this? Stand firm, mm -hmm. child of God. Mm -hmm. Stand firm because of God. Mm -hmm. Stand firm for your salvation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't Continue. Compromise. Don't, mm -hmm. compromise Don't compromise your faith. Your faith. Uh -huh. Don't compromise. Sure. Better, they, better, they better say that you're not a good person, but you know inside you, mm, I am of God. Uh -huh. The Bible says what? Being a friend to the world is being an enemy to God. Uh -huh. ah, better men to hate you, but be loved by God. Uh -huh. Better men to reject you, but be loved by God. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Listen to me, child of God. You can be righteous, man. There are challenges. They will come on your way. But guess what? There is a confidence we have in Christ. Mm -hmm. He is a true God. Mm -hmm. Whatever I promise, He is able to do it. God bless you all. May God fight for you. Shalom. Shalom. God bless you. Thank you so Amen. Much. Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you, servant of God, Pastor Isaac and uh, Janice Moya, for being a blessing to us today. And now, in conclusion, I would want us to hear the word of God that says that is in Proverbs chapter 13, verse 6. And the Bible says, Righteousness guards him whose way is blameless, but wickedness overthrows the sinner. That is why you need to live a life of righteousness because you know what is going to, righteousness is going to guard you. And if you do not, you know what? If you don't choose righteousness, you cannot escape wickedness. Because you either walk in righteousness or you live a life of wickedness. And you know what's going to happen? Wickedness overthrows the sinners. Because when you are wicked, you are a sinner. And what is going to happen to you, it is going to overthrow you. We have seen quite a number of people that have been overthrown by wickedness. Look at Cain. When, when, when he was jealous of his brother, he decided he is, you know, jealous in itself is sin. And so what happened to him? The wickedness actually overthrew him. That jealous overthrew him. And he ended up killing his brother. And after killing the brother, do you know what happened? He was cursed. So the, let, us, let us make sure we pursue righteousness and even proclaim it in every place we do, we go and in everything we do. Let there be a proclamation of our right of the righteousness of God because our righteousness cannot stand. It's only the righteousness of God that is going to live forever. And now in conclusion, let's, let's look at Psalms uh, chapter 89 verses 13 to 15. The Bible says, you have a strong arm, mighty is your hand. Your right hand is exalted. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Loving kindness and truth go before you. Blessed and happy are the people who know the joyful sound of the trumpet's blessed. They walk, O oh Lord, in the light and favor of your countenance. We are talking about the righteous people. We are told that, you know what? Righteousness and justice are the foundation of God's throne. So if you want a good foundation, you got to walk in righteousness, you got to pursue righteousness and even proclaim it. Because you know what? When you proclaim righteousness, there is no way you'll be, fe you'll be feeling guilty if you don't leave it. So the, the good thing is when you keep proclaiming and telling others about the only righteousness that you know about Jesus Christ who loves and saves even it doesn't matter what you have done or what kind of lifestyle you have lived. Jesus is loves and even saves. So when you proclaim this kind of salvation or proclaim this kind of righteousness to people, let me tell you, you are going to make sure that you also live this kind of life so that the Lord will be glorified. May the Lord bless you as you continue to walk in his ways and even to please him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for giving us this wonderful platform where we are proclaiming righteousness. I thank you for every, every speaker today. Thank you, Father, even for using them powerfully today and even uh, making sure that, uh, Lord Jesus, that this, this platform continues even, uh, even as you continue to use even our media team to, who have been very, very supportive. We want to thank God for them that as they continue to stand and serving you on this 
platform. You'll use them powerfully for your glory. We thank you, Lord, even for all the CMCs all over the world. Continue using them and making use, uh, using them so that they, proc they proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God and they proclaim the righteousness of God. We claim every nation and declare that all the nations that we have touched, all the nations that we have prayed for, that none of them, King of Glory, is going to perish, but all of them are going to come into the kingdom of God and proclaim, continue also proclaiming righteousness because we know we are on the winning side because Christ, who is our righteousness, is with us. We thank you and we honor you and give you praise for it is in Jesus' name we have prayed and we have believed. Amen. May the Lord bless you as you continue to love and serve and walk in righteousness. Please invite your friends and even share this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like our channel and like even our, uh, our pages on, on Facebook. And God is going to bless you in a great way. I want to thank God for each one of you for making sure that you are logged in and you are touching uh, and you are inviting your friends. I thank God even for our media team. Thank you, uh, Prophet Steve, for the great work you're doing and even um, Minister Minister, I, uh, Minister Eric Gashukia, we want to thank God for you for standing with us. And even the amazing champions who have always been there standing and praying for me, making sure that this program is there and they're the first ones to log in. May the Lord bless you. I look forward to meet you again and even fellowship with you again. For now, may the Lord bless you as we say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen.